I have to say, the Amiga Speedmaster 57 isn't what I expected. Recently, we went to a VIP Amiga event at Chisholm Hunter in Edinburgh and we finally got hands on with the Amiga Speedmaster 57. We had the green, we had the black and we had the blue. We unfortunately didn't get the burgundy, but we got all of the rest of them and they weren't what I expected. So let's run through the specs. Let's run through my thoughts and my feelings. Welcome back to Time in the Wrist at Chisholm Hunter. My name is Harrison, as always, and let's begin with the case diameter of this model. So the case diameter comes in at 40 millimeters, or 40.5 millimeters, just over 40 millimeters, and that is hitting that sweet spot in the industry at the moment. Everybody wants smaller watches, including myself, and so this is a breath of fresh air. I have 6.5 inch wrists, and I have to say, when I wore this watch, when I had it on and tried it on, I would honestly say it was more comfortable than my Amiga Seamaster. And I think that is partly down to this reduced case size. It just sits wonderfully on the wrist. With that said, this size can be a little bit deceiving. And the reason that it can be deceiving is because those pushers at the right hand side give this watch more of a presence on the wrist. Now, I wouldn't say it feels bigger, but it definitely has more presence when you're looking at it on your wrist just because those pushers are quite elongated. So I'd bear that in mind when you're getting this watch or if you want to try it on. The thickness of this model comes in at 12.99 millimeters. So it is slightly under the 13 millimeter mark, but I would have expected it to be even thinner due to the fact that it is a manual wind movement. I'm gonna speak about that a little bit later. I'm a huge fan of this manual wind movement, but I think a lot of the extra thickness can be equated to the domed sapphire crystal glass. Now this sapphire crystal glass has anti-reflective treatment on both sides, we'll get to that in a second, but to me personally, I prefer slimmer watches. So I think it'd be really cool to have some iterations of this watch with just flat sapphire crystal instead of dome. On the subject of that sapphire crystal glass, I know the argument here. I know that people are going to say the fact that it has anti-reflective coating on both sides could be a negative. It could be perceived as a negative. And I understand where they're coming from because technically speaking, you will scratch that a little bit easier than the sapphire crystal glass. The anti-reflective coating might scratch off. But let me put something to you. I've had my Amiga Seamaster for two years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, two, two years, two and a half years, something like that. And I've taken it up hills on the watch vlog, I've taken it in the ocean, and it's not got one scratch on it. And I've put this thing through absolute misery. So I think you should be okay. The metal used on the case and the bracelet are both stainless steel. Now stainless steel is one of my favorite metals. I've said this in like 20 other videos. It just shines extremely bright, especially when you have a darkened dial. Now we'll get onto the dial in a second. The stainless steel on the bracelet and the case is predominantly polished, but it has a couple of brushed areas in there that, that are kind of thrown in that look nice in terms of design. What I would say though, is the fact that it's more polished than brushed makes it a lot more dressy to me. The, the last thing I would want to do with this watch is scratch that beautiful polished steel. So I'd be very careful with where you wear this watch. It, I don't think it's as much of a sports watch as say the one that I have on, but yeah, I'd say it's more dressy. Now you can actually buy these watches with the leather strap option. So with the burgundy, you have kind of this burgundy feeling strap with the green, green, blue, blue, and brown, or kind of black. You have this brownie strap, which looks really vintage. It looks nice. Leather straps aren't exactly my style. And to be honest, guys, the colors of these straps, I just couldn't pull them off. I think they look cool. I think they look quirky. I think they look a little bit different but it's just not something I could pull off. Apart from the black and the brown, that looks nice and vintage. I could probably pull that off, but the other colors, probably not. I'd stick with the stainless steel bracelet because the bracelet is awesome. On the subject of the bracelet, the bracelet is obviously stainless steel, but it comes with a three link feel. Now the bracelet on this model is a lot more attractive to me, in my opinion, than the Amiga Seamaster. I just really am a fan of the bracelet on this watch and they've actually added Amiga's new deployment clasp. So if you look at the clasp, you can actually see the Amiga logo hanging over the other side of the bracelet so you can flick it up with your finger and it's really, really easy to use. It's just a really nice system and I am a fan of this bracelet and I'm especially a fan of the new clasp. 
Before we get into the bezel, the dial color, the movement, and all that good stuff about this watch, and also what I didn't expect from this model, let's talk about the pushers at the right hand side. So you obviously have two pushers, the start and the stop, and they control the chronograph. Um, which is on the dial of this watch. Now we'll talk about the actual chronograph a little bit later. It also has a screw down crown at the three o'clock mark and that ensures a water resistance of, I believe it's 50 meters. But let me double check. I was correct. It was 50 meters off water resistance. This watch does have 50 meters water resistance. Also, this watch can be viewed at Chisholm Hunter, who are actually authorized retailers of Amiga watches. Head to chismhunter.co.uk, which is like below. I've never spoken that fast in my life. Did you hear that? Moving on to that bezel. The bezel is made from stainless steel and has black numerals. The tachymetric scale is in black. Now, something that I really like about this bezel is that steel bezels are kind of a dying breed in the industry. I mean, everybody is going with ceramic. The Daytona has a ceramic bezel now. You can see it on the Zenith Chronomaster Sport, etc., etc. And I am always a fan of the underdog. Now, something that I will always regret in my watch journey is when I sold my Amiga Seamaster Great White. It was called the Great White, that was the nickname. And it had a stainless steel bezel. Because it has a stainless steel bezel, it shines a lot brighter and pops out that dark dial a lot more, in my opinion. So I've always been a fan of stainless steel bezels and it's kind of upsetting that they're maybe not as common anymore. Moving on to the dial detail and let's tell a bit of a personal story before we get into the dial detail. So obviously this dial comes in black and the black dial is actually a sandwich dial. Then you have your burgundy, your blue and your green. This is what I didn't expect. From the pictures of the dial, the colors all seem a little bit vibrant to me. I, I, I mean, I like the blue, but the burgundy and the green, they seemed a little bit too bold for my tastes. When I saw the green in person, it was very dark. It was very understated. And this is the second time that I've made the, this mistake. I made this mistake with the Amiga Seamaster Seaweed, as it's been called, which is the green dial. I thought the colors were too vibrant, but then I saw it in person and they're actually a lot nicer than I thought they would be. Now, yes, I haven't seen the burgundy, but I would assume the same thing that will happen to the burgundy that happened to the other colors. I think the moral of the story is, don't judge a book by its color. Come to Chisholm Hunter and watch a review and see it for yourself. The three colors, the blue, green, and burgundy do not have this sandwich dial. It is only the black that has that sandwich dial. And it's kind of a shame to me because it was such a cool feature about this watch and it's something that I really, really liked. I would have loved to see that incarnated into the colored versions. Now, who knows? That might be coming, you know, this year, it might be coming next year or it might be coming the year after that. But I am excited for when that happens because if I were to predict, I think it will. All the colors have a sun ray pattern running through them, apart from obviously the black dial, which is of course matte instead of a sun ray pattern. And I think that's probably why they added that sandwich dial. Now the hands are polished and highly reflective so you can see them against the darkened dials. And this is partly why I prefer the colors of these being a little bit darker because the hands are a lot more prominent and it's a lot more readable. The indices stand out against that dial more. I just feel when the color's too vibrant on a watch, you can't really read the time as clearly. This watch is of course a chronometer, so it has a 12 hour marker at the three o'clock mark, a date window at the six o'clock mark. To my satisfaction, you just shouldn't put date windows at three o'clock. And then it has a 60 minute counter at the, let me just, nine o'clock mark. <laughs> The loom on this model is pretty bright. It's what you would expect from a chronometer. It is, it is a good loom. I don't think it's as prominent as the Amiga Seamaster, but then this is a diving watch, so you can understand why it doesn't need to be as bright as that. But yeah, listen, it's nice. And on that note, it is time for the Chisholm Hunter tradition. That's such a hard thing to say. Honestly, try and say that three times faster. It's really, really difficult. I love seeing all the weird and wonderful watches that you guys have in your collection, so please let me know below. I want you to guess what I have on my wrist. You guys can probably guess because I say it every single video, but listen, let's play a game. What do I have? Now we go on to the most important bit of this watch, which is of course the movement. Now the movement on this model is a manual wind movement, but I've said this in a couple of videos and I'm gonna say it again just to reiterate it. I do not think having a manual wind watch is a bad thing. I think it creates a deeper connection between the owner and the timepiece. I mean, you have to, you, you are responsible for that watch's life. You are responsible to keep it ticking. 
It's almost like watering a plant. You're responsible for that plant. You have a connection with that plant. And that's why I quite like manual wind watches. It's almost like having a manual car. You always felt like you had a deeper connection. The movement in this Amiga is the Caliber 9906. It's a manual winding chronograph with a column wheel and coaxial escapement. It's certified by Master Chronometer, approved by Metas, and resistant to magnetic fields reaching 15,000 gauss. It has a silicon balance spring, two barrels mounted in series, time zone function, central, hour, minute, and chronograph second hands, date function, small seconds counter, 12 hour and 60 minute counter. It has a rhodium plated finish with Geneva waves in arabesque. It has a pretty good power reserve of 60 hours. This full package comes in at 7,740 pounds. Now it is 200 pounds cheaper if you want to get the leather strap, but to me, I do prefer the bracelet. And I do think that this watch is a little bit more dressy. Now going on to the, let's link this back to the start of the video or the title of the video. I vastly misjudged this watch. I thought the colors were too vibrant, just too bold for my style. But when I got them on and tried them on in person, they weren't. I thought that the Amiga Seamaster Seaweed was too bold, too vibrant for my style. But when I got it on, tried it on in person, it wasn't. So don't judge a book by its cover. I think that's the lesson I'm trying to teach here because I got it wrong, I, I truly did. And sometimes you walk into a shop and you try on a watch and you get a connection to a watch that you never thought that you would. And that's quite a nice feeling. And sometimes people are so quick to judge that they don't even try those watches on. So I think that's the lesson I'm trying to tell here. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Time in the Wrist at Chisholm Hunter. My name is Harrison, as always. And if you've enjoyed this video, then please hit this little subscribe bubble just here. And if anything, guys, please just see this as a video that gives you an excuse to go in and try cool watches on. I think that's the premise of this channel. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.